I'm Lashmidar Behera in Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Kanpur. So I'll be teaching all of you intelligent control. And this will be an introductory lecture. This is a fast lecture. Uh, in this introductory lecture, I would uh, cover uh, those aspects of intelligent control that will give you a holistic view or a complete picture of this subject. Why intelligent control? Why we should learn this topic? So, here is the outline. We all those who will be looking forward to attending this lecture series. I assume that all of you have sufficient background on linear control system. And uh, when we talk about intelligent control, most of the time we talk about the controlling nonlinear systems. This is one of the reasons for studying intelligent control is that it is not so difficult to design linear control system, but it is difficult to design nonlinear control system. We will cover in this intelligent control course, fuzzy logic, neural network, fuzzy neural, these are the tools that are various tools actually for intelligent control techniques, but in this course we will limit our focus on these three things fuzzy logic, neural network, fuzzy neural network. And uh, today's introductory class, I will show you some of these uh, um, typical examples where intelligent control is pretty nice, they are pretty interesting as well as exciting also challenging. I just uh, remind you what is linear system theory. You express the system model either using state space or using transfer function. Let me tell you that how do you design a control system. We have a plant, the plant may be a power system, plant may be a pH reactor plant may be a robot manipulator, any physical device that is of interest to us and we want to control that device. Controlling device means we regulate some of the variables that is of importance in this device like maybe speed of a motor or you know the pH value of a reactor or you know voltage level in power system bus bar. So, there are various uh, physical variables that we would like to govern or control. Before we can control, we must know the system as it is, the plant as it is. So, that is where we talk about mathematical model. So, this once we derive a mathematical model and these mathematical models are derived using the basic principles of science, whether it is physics, chemistry, biology, the physical laws that we have in these fields. Using these laws like for example, if I am simply talking about you know the motor the dynamic model of a motor, I must be very much clear about the, the principles by which uh, a electromechanical device works. Hmm? There is a mechanical principle, there is electrical principle combined together. So, these physical principles should be very clear to me before I can describe a physical device using mathematical model. So, these mathematical models they can be of various type, but popularly 
they are either state space model or transfer function model. And the various once you have a mathematical model we do not again look at the physical uh, system for designing control system. We design a control system for the physical model uh, for the mathematical model and after designing a control system for the mathematical model that we have derived for a physical system we test on the real system our control algorithm. So, as far as the design is concerned always we value the mathematical model of the system that has been derived and these two categories either state space or transfer function that are very widely studied in literature and most of our control systems are based on these two models different these two different models. And uh, as far as uh, the transfer functions are concerned we normally you know the industrial controllers they normally you design PID controller either using frequency domain approach or time domain approach you know all of you might have heard about you know, root locus method that is under time domain approach you know using Bode plot, Nyquist diagram uh, this is frequency domain. And in state feedback controller you must have heard about pole placement linear quadratic regula regulator this is an optimal control. And also robust controller this is another uh, type of controller when we assume these uh, plant models are not exact they are inexact. Uh, so, this is a kind of a overview of uh, the linear systems that is we have state space model or transfer function model of an actual plant. And for these two models we design you know various type of controllers for transfer function we design PID controller or PID compensator using uh, frequency domain or time domain approach and for state feedback controller we design pole placement linear quadrature regulator and when models are not exact more there are certain uncertainties we talk about robust controller that means if I design a controller for a particular plant with certain uh, uncertainty the mathematical model that is given to me but that is little uncertain then how robust is my control system in the presence of uncertainties. So, now the question is that uh, the linear systems are very well understood uh, most of the time in literature um, from design principle wise linear systems are well covered, but are systems line linear this is a very paramount question is our systems linear uh, the real system physical system. Now, here is a simple familiar physical device you are looking here this is mass damper and spring system and uh, those all of you I would expect that you have taken the control system course and you must have studied this system in the beginning of a course. So, this is a popular uh, uh, second order model of this m x double dot plus b x dot plus k x equal to f. So, system is linear if b and k are constant coefficients b and k constant coefficients then the system is linear. Um, but if these coefficients b and k have this following functional relationship b 1 x dot square is b and k 1 x square is k and we put these things here the system becomes nonlinear. So, what I am suggesting you is that most of the time physical systems although we model using linear system theory but they are nonlinear and there are also systems which are inherently nonlinear. I will take a special class on nonlinear system uh, during this lecture series, uh, but uh, we will not talk much about <coughs> this difference between linear and nonlinear um, the, the from the mathematical principle we will discuss that as course progresses. 
But what I'm trying to say is that most of the system we encounter, they are naturally nonlinear rather than linear. And uh, for nonlinear systems, we have uh, the researchers, the um, control engineers, they have developed various theories to tackle um, um, these kind of plants when the, the plant is nonlinear. So, there are certain popular control methodologies, you know, you have not come across this kind of methodologies in linear system theory. These are known as feedback linearization, backstepping, sliding mode control, singular perturbation method, passivity based control. So, these are all various categories of uh, nonlinear control methodologies. Of course, uh, we will not be um, discussing in detail about nonlinear these kind of methodologies, but we will adopt this principle while designing uh, intelligent control. So, in intelligent control uh, uh, is not something uh, the concept wise it is not something uh, qu quite you know apart from what we are studying in linear control theory or nonlinear control theory. Rather these concepts are taken very nicely and in a in a very convenient manner they are put for put forth uh, uh, in such a way the control designs becomes very easy and particularly you can adapt to any kind of plant okay so here is a limitation of nonlinear control strategies um, controller design is system specific normally just like a linear system theory uh, for a, a generalized second order linear system, you can always have a generalized control law. Similarly, for a generalized uh, you know any third order system, you can have a generalized uh, control law. But uh, uh, controller designed for nonlinear system, you cannot say there is some uh, every nonlinear system has a different structure. And um, that is why we cannot actually uh, make a kind of a generalized control law for a nonlinear system within the domain of nonlinear control theory. So, that is why the controller design is become system specific, you know, we design a control system for a specific nonlinear plant with a specific nonlinear model. So, no generalized tool for analysis actually is present in nonlinear control theory. Also, whenever there is unstructured dynamics, then this theory may fail, that is, the stability may not be guaranteed. Also, when there are parametric uncertainties, unknown dynamics, uh, we do not know how within the paradigm of nonlinear control theory they can be taken into account although we have certain methodologies to adapt robust control methodology, um, adaptive control methodology for nonlinear system to take some of these issues into account, but in general um, in a classical nonlinear control strategies are not so robust uh, against unstructured dynamics, parametric uncertainties and unknown dynamics. So, that is why we are now talking about intelligent control. So, before we talk about intelligent control, is it that linear system theory is not intelligent? Is it that nonlinear control theory is not intelligent? It is. One may argue yes, you need intelligence to design control system, whether it is a linear control theory uh, uh, or nonlinear control theory. But in this case, when we talk specifically intelligent control theory, uh, the certain uh, work in artificial intelligence, certain uh, results in artificial intelligence uh, that is motivated to understand intelligence has been used in the framework of intelligent control and that is why we say intelligent control. That is, or the when we coin the word intelligence, intelligent control, 
the some of these tools that we have worked in the field of artificial intelligence like neural network, fuzzy logic, uh, patronets like that. When we use these tools uh, in designing control system, then you know historically the field has been known as intelligent control. Now, what is intelligence? Uh, I would say something mysterious. Turing proposed it to be combination of five components and um, you say that uh, this is intelligence and it has five component perception, problem solving, reasoning, learning is very important particularly uh, as far as this uh, course is concerned. This is one of the most important component that we will be considering. Language understanding of course, we will not be concern much of this component uh, of intelligence. Um, but actually um, what is intelligence is very difficult to answer. But uh, for the time being probably we can say okay, these components when they are there probably they constitute uh, together intelligence. Okay. Now we will talk about uh, intelligence again or uh, normally the intuition that we have for using the term intelligence it comes from uh, the, the human way of doing things, human way of solving things. Normally we always ask a question how we solve a problem, how we you know rotate our uh, hand or rotate our head when we track and target or when we want to pick a ball, um, how we move or when we uh, play a soccer in the football uh, field, how do we give a pass or how do we intercept a football. Uh, so, the human way of working uh, is, is something uh, that is very, you know, very, uh, is very little known about it and that is why when we talk about uh, uh, intelligence, uh, we always try to understand how biological organism function uh, at specific situation. And when a machine uh, can mimic the way the biological organism we have to situation to environment and then we say probably they are uh, intelligent machine. So, the when I said here biologically plausible foundation to intelligent machine. Uh, um, so, because I am saying biologically plausible foundation when I say, so uh, I coin here three particular uh, terms intelligently observe, intelligent prediction, intelligent interaction. Uh, observation means we get certain data and I used a filter and I have now faithful data and using this data. I want to make a model of the system. So, this is called system identification. Why? Because once you have a model you can predict about the system behavior. This is all control you know how do we do control. So, we observe and then predict and finally, intelligent interaction based on the model I can predict various behavior and according to the desired behavior whatever my desired behavior. I do interaction. This is called adaptive control in classical term. So, the, the basic foundation for an intelligent machine uh, when I talk about intelligently observe, intelligent prediction, intelligent interaction, the, the classical counterparts are stochastic filtering, system identification and adaptive control. Now, uh, here as I said here, real intelligence is what determines a normal thought process of a human. Artificial intelligence is a property of machines which gives it ability to mimic the human thought process. So, the intelligent machines are developed based on intelligence of a subject, of a designer, of a person, of a human being. Now, two question, can we construct a control system 
that hypothesize its own controller. Like you know we encounter uh, a plant and uh, looking at plant behavior sometime we have to switch from one control system to another control system where the plant is operating. Plant is operating linear zone, nonlinear zone. Probably an operator can take a very nice intelligent decision about it, but can a machine do it? Um, can a machine actually hypothesize a control law looking at the model? Can we design a method that can estimate any signal embedded in a noise without assuming any signal or noise behavior? This is the first part what I am trying to say is that before we model a system we need to observe that is we are collecting certain data from the system and how do we actually and this data is polluted or corrupted by noise, how do we separate uh, the actual data from the corrupted data. So, this is the second question. First question is that, that a control system can, can it be able to hypothesize its own control law. These are very important question we should think actually. Now, I let me give you a simple example. What you are seeing is actually a second order nonlinear system. This is H y is a nonlinear function, G y is another nonlinear function. And if we actually want to study the stability of this uh, type of function, uh, then if given that h y is greater than 0 always it is positive imply, then the stability analysis we do using Lyapunov stability theory. But unfortunately in Lyapunov stability theory it is the person who is actually analyzing he has to hypothesize what must be a valid Lyapunov function. And, uh, uh, here you see we have a Lyapunov function v x 0 to x 1 this is the function g different uh, integrated function g uh, you know, over from 0 to x 1 and plus half x 2 square where you convert this nonlinear system into a state space model where uh, two states are y and y dot x 1 and x 2. So, then this becomes a valid Lyapunov function and uh, you can see that using this Lyapunov function you can always say whether the system is stable or not uh, not stable. But can we construct an intelligent network or intelligent machine that can hypothesize the above Lyapunov function that is given a nonlinear function can the machine come up with its own hypothesis that this is going to be right Lyapunov function for this system. If we can probably uh, we can say that we have an intelligent network or intelligent machine here sitting right in front of us. We do not have to think my machine can actually predict a proper Lyapunov function for any system. Uh, of course, Lyapunov function is always um, uh, mostly most of the time it is always defined for uh, nonlinear system because for linear system the form of Lyapunov function is already known but for nonlinear system is system Lyapunov function is system specific it is not known this uh, this example uh, like you know uh, this is a typical control law for a linear system uh, we normally define and this uh, this this typical control law uh, this uh, uh, structure uh, the control structure is valid for any linear system whether we design a state feedback controller 
linear quadratic regulator and so forth. So, as I said earlier can that uh, because we know uh, based on our experience we know this is a generic structure of a control law for a linear system, but uh, and how do we know this? So, how does the control engineer know that such a control law will help? It is through his experience, intuition and some mathematics that he has learnt. So, based on that uh, the moment I uh, look at a linear system I can always say this is the generic form of control law, state feedback control law. But can a learning machine do so? This is the question. If I am actually doing intelligent control, um, I am I'm trying to learn intelligent control, can I say that this is the, 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 the machine that I have designed, you know it goes through the data from the system and then he says this is going to be uh, a generic control law for the system. Can we predict or can my machine predict? Uh, this is again the same thing that I said when I have a signal, the signal can be a DC time independent sinusoid modulated various types of signals I can have and these signals are you know corrupted with noise and I want to uh, separate the signal from the corrupted signal. So, when I want to estimate the, the corruption or the noise that has been injected into the signal may be Gaussian, non-Gaussian and so many things. And then with all these assumption that means in classical approach what I say when I try to separate a signal from this corrupted counterpart, then I always assume what kind of signal it is it can be. I assume what kind of noise it can be. I always take these models into account and then I propose an estimator. So, but in general, but can we say this kind of methodology is intelligent? Um, this is a question. The question is that you know we have to make so many assumptions before we make a predictive model. Um, so, what I said until now is that uh, I just raised uh, certain issues in your mind about intelligent control, what is intelligence, why we need intelligent control. So, here we can summarize it saying the topic is why intelligent control. So, first is it should take care of model uncertainties that is when we derive mathematical model of any nonlinear plant the model is not always exact. So, there are always uh, associated uncertainties. Second, my control systems should be adaptive to change in environment okay. and also it should be distributed in nature. Uh, so, here let us uh, ask this question that where we are really would like to use this kind of methodology. So, one of the very um, typical situation is unmanned vehicle you know not only the flying one even our uh, we can probably we can design uh, a, a laboratory size automobile which were uh, you know the driver is a machine instead of a uh, human being. Um, also here you can see that a robot um, playing squash or even robot can also play soccer. Uh, here is a you know you see the robotic gripper um, picking a delicate substance like an egg. Uh, this is another um, kind of robot gripper. So, there are can be many varieties of you know sophisticated machines um, in applications like healthcare, mine explore detection, 
security, you know, the surveillance monitoring, um, uh, industrial cleaning and so forth. Even here you can see robotic surgery. Uh, these all require, you know, these are all activities uh, that uh, requires expertise and an expert, you know, a human expert does things, does these things very well. So, can we replace these human experts uh, by intelligent machine? This is one of the questions that we always ask when we talk about intelligent control. So, um, by saying that uh, what we are going to do with intelligent control, uh, it is not that intelligent control completely rejects uh, the methodologies that we have learnt in control theory, linear control theory, nonlinear control theory. It also, uh, it does not reject, it also uses, you know, even con conventional control methods. And uh, we can also, these conventional control schemes can be very nicely or adaptively uh, coupled in specific situation, uh, which normally we call switching control using intelligent control techniques. Okay. So, here are um, some of the definition of level of intelligence. At the lowest level, we have to uh, sense the environment like you know, I want to do a temperature control, I must have temperature sensor. I want to do position control, I have to have a position sensor. Then um, higher level of intelligence, this is ability to recognize object and event, like a robot should be able to recognize where is the ball, if it wants to play the soccer, you know, if you know surgery when a robotic surgery is taking place, the, 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 the robot there should be able to identify each and every organ of the human body. Uh, similarly, uh, also to represent knowledge in a world model, the way we uh, manipulate the objects in this world. And of course, the advances, of course, this is a very high level of uh, intelligence that we even do not understand, the capacity to perceive and understand. I will talk this at the end of this lecture today. Okay. So, let us uh, be a little um, speedy here. Uh, because I wanted to give you a little a feel of this entire subject today in this introductory class. So, here are certain uh, um, you know various methodologies that uh, we adopt while designing intelligent control uh, system. Automata um, theory we use, hybrid system concept, uh, um, petri nets, neural networks, fuzzy logic, evolution algorithm. But basically, we will mostly focus this last three um, tools because they have become very popular in designing intelligent control theory. Okay, so what is fuzzy logic? Um, some of the time, uh, most of the time, um, uh, people are fascinated about um, fuzzy logic controller. Uh, at some point of time, in Japan. Uh, the scientist uh, designed fuzzy logic controller for even you know a very any kind of household appliances like uh, you know um, like even a, uh, whether it is a room heater it is a washing machine. Um, so, its, it's, it's, it's popularity is, uh, is that it has been applied to, um, to various engineering uh, products. Uh, but uh, in this lecture, we will, you know, in the lecture series, we will discuss detail what is fuzzy logic. Today, I will not talk in detail, I will just uh, let you know what is exactly little idea about fuzzy logic. Uh, you see that this is, a, you know, this is a line, and in this line, you have, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, and this minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So, when I say 0, um, it is 0. Thus, if it is 0, then I say it is 0. The its truth value is 1. And if it is not 0, its truth value is uh, 0. But the moment I say almost 0, almost 0, then uh, 
I, I can think of a picture like this that uh, between almost like minus 1 to 1 uh, the values uh, around 0 is 0 because this is almost 0 and you can see that this gradient allows me to allow maximum weightage of the value very near to 0 and as the value goes away from 0 the truth value reduces. So, the, we are discussing concept of a fuzzy number we talked about 0 almost 0 this is a you know I am I am not very precise, but that is the that is the way I use my day to day language in interpreting the real world. And when I say near 0 maybe you know the bandwidth of this triangle this triangle represents actually the truth value. Okay. So, you can see that this is more the bandwidth increases near 0. Uh, so, this is the concept of Hoji number. Um, um, I can I will I'll, I'll give little uh, uh, explanation um, okay, in the as we discuss specifically Hoji logic controller aspect in this course we will discuss more detail about this concept. For the moment um, let me tell you that when I say fuzzy logic that is uh, the variables that we uh, encounter in physical devices I um, use the fuzzy number to describe these variables. And using this methodology when I design a controller I say it is a fuzzy logic controller. Now, it is neural network. Um, neural networks are basically inspired by various uh, um, way of observing the biological organism the most uh, the time it is motivated from human way of learning. It is a learning theory. So, this is an artificial network that learns from example and because it is distributed in nature fault tolerant parallel processing of data distributed structure. This is uh, the neural network that we normally design, but if you look at actual neuron the biological neuron they are highly complex in it with the information contained in spikes computation and plasticity exhibited at advanced level. Information processing is done through complex processes and not simple aggregation, but when we talk about artificial neural network. Uh, neurons are elementary units can be digital analog we can also make some spike models that are basic computation summation multiplication and uh, here is a very simple Maclopitz neuron model here your inputs and these are all synaptic weights they are all summed here and then there is an activation function and here is your output y. So, in a way your output is summation of the signal multiplied with synaptic weight over many input channels. So, you can see that how this is a specific neuron this is action through action this neuron actuates a signal and this signal fans out through synapses to various neurons. Okay. So, similarly and this is a biological neuron and here it is a classical uh, artificial neuron and you can see this is a computational unit and there are many inputs reaching this just like here this is one input another input another input another input this input excites this neuron similarly there are many inputs that excite this computational unit and the output again excites many other units just like here. And like that taking certain concepts in actual neural network we develop these uh, artificial computing model having similar structure. Although we do that let us try to see what is exactly we are up to it is a brain and you see that in this brain 
there are various location you know this is auditory uh, this is you know visual cortex um, so there are various location where various functions uh, take place in the brain we if you look at a computer and the brain uh, this is a central processing unit and in a brain uh, let us compare what is the connection between our high speed computer that are available in the market today and a brain. Uh, approximately there are 10 to the power 14 synapses in the human brain 10 to the power 14 whereas uh, uh, typically you will have 10 to the power 8 transistors inside a CPU. Uh, the element size almost comparable both the things 10 to the power minus 6 and uh, energy use is almost like 30 watt um, and comparable actually that is the energy dissipated in a brain almost and in a computer. But you see the processing speed, processing speed uh, is only 100 hertz very slow our brain is whereas computer nowadays you know some giga hertz. And uh, when you compare this you get an idea that uh, although the computer is very fast that we have, but it is very slow to do intelligent tasks like pattern recognition, language understanding. These are, these are certain uh, activities humans do much better, but with such a slow speed 100 hertz. So, little contrasting you will see that um, between these two the difference is that we uh, the one of the very big difference between these two uh, structure one is brain another is central processing unit is that the brain it learns we learn okay there is a certain mapping that forms in biological brain that we have you know studied uh, you know neuroscience uh, that is not there in a central processing unit. And of course, you know of course, this we do not know whether the self awareness takes place in the brain or somewhere else, um, but of course, we know that in a computer there is no self awareness. Saying that let us uh, what we will be discovering in this course, we will be covering when we discuss a uh, neural network we will be covering some of the popular learning methods, because neural networks are uh, analogous to adaptive control concepts that we have in control theory. And one of the most important aspect of intelligent control is to learn, learn the control parameters, to learn the system model. So, some of the learning methodologies we will be learning here the back propagation algorithm, real time learning algorithm for recurrent network, cohen and self organizing feature map, Hopfield network. Um, if time permits we may also discuss about support vector machine. Okay, so, these are all as I have already said these are all uh, summary of uh, neural network. We will discuss the these concepts even in more rigorous manner in the next class. Uh, Okay. Some of the applications that we will rigorously take up in this course is uh, like you know we will show how to design a fuzzy logic controller. So, let me summarize now what we talked about. We talked about fuzzy logic controller, fuzzy logic neural network. Um, we did not talk so much about evolutionary computation, this also we will talk as we take that specific uh, um, subject and uh, here in under fuzzy logic controller when we teach it, um, through this course when we learn through this course these are some of the interesting uh, physical devices that we will consider for designing one is single link manipulator. We will take a very simple system so that we can design completely we will simulate it sometimes also I will show you some of the experimental results like inertial wheel pendulum this is in my lab and my students who are working on this particular system you know they have 
certain nice interesting results and I will demonstrate that also in this course. So, inertial wheel pendulum, pH reactor, single link manipulator, these are very nice interesting nonlinear systems and very interesting to see that how we can design controller using fuzzy logic concepts. Um, so, this is a little um, details a single link manipulator has you know you see that uh, because of the sin theta term the system becomes nonlinear. you know it does not follow the superposition principle. Um, we will be designing these all varieties of controller PID controller, fuzzy logic controller you know we will use also genetic algorithm how to optimize fuzzy logic controller. So, these are the you know uh, the insight you know the, the, the description of the course model that I am now making. So, that you are very well aware that what we are going to cover in this course. And um, here is a pH controller you can see is that this is a continuously stirred tank reactor and here you know there are three things entering into this particular uh, uh, um, container uh, that is uh, buffer is a substance and then acid as well as base these are various kinds of uh, um, you know liquids that enters into this uh, um, this container based on their pH value. And uh, the objective is that we want to maintain the pH of this uh, container constant and so what we normally do is that we control only the base flow means uh, the from the from the plant wastes or something like that you know the the various things enter into this and this waste product has to be you know discharged to the environment but if it is too you know its pH value is you know towards acidity to I mean, is more likely acidic or more likely alkaline uh, accordingly this will have a you know you know very drastic impact on the environment to avoid that we want to neutralize the pH value normally the neutralized value of pH is 7. And uh, so, how do we inject either base or acid into the system such that this pH remains constant. Um, although this uh, looks like a very simple system, but you know the dynamics becomes nonlinear. We will show in detail how to solve this uh, control system designed for this system. Actually, this is a you know practical system we have already done. You know we have a, we have synthesized a, a, a pH reactor, and we have actually applied fuzzy logic controller to this pH reactor uh, in detail. So this we will take in detail. Uh, here is uh, you can see that uh, inertial wheel pendulum uh, and uh, you can see that um, this uh, this what you are seeing here is um, the inverted uh, the pendulum attached with a disc here. So, this is a pendulum rod and that there is a disc. So, the objective is to bring this pendulum to the top position. Um, and uh, that is uh, um, done using certain concepts of uh, uh, nonlinear control, we say swing up control and balancing control. This we will discuss in detail and we will show that how we can design for this also fuzzy logic controller. The other controllers that uh, we will be designing and we will demonstrate in terms of uh, the application of neural network. Um, here are certain uh, systems that we will uh, discuss in this course. One is robot arm, visual motor coordination, this is hand eye coordination just like you know when um, I uh, pass a uh, I pass a ball to my uh, fellow player um, there is enough coordination takes place between hand uh, leg and eye. Uh, similarly, when I try to um, exhibit any skill with my hand then uh, for manipulating certain environment uh, around me 
then there is also certain degree of coordination between hand and eye. So, this is called visual motor coordination and we will solve th this problem using uh, neural controller. Similarly, binocular vision system for object tracking. Uh, this is a typical robot manipulator you can see this is a gripper and these are uh, the, the, the one link another link and the, this is a bass. Uh, so, this is a, a typical um, uh, this is a dynamics of uh, uh, this robot manipulator and uh, this is a binocular vision system you have two robot uh, camera um, sorry this is a two camera and um, this uh, two camera. Uh, uh, are uh, tracking certain uh, moving object you know this is a pan this pan can move upward downward in certain angle and accordingly this uh, also this uh, this um, camera here and here they can also turn in a circle. So, as per that uh, uh, we can actually um, see this this camera is looking at a point here this is the point p and this is the trajectory of my moving object this is the trajectory of my moving object and as the object moves i want to focus the object as it moves and uh, how do i uh, exactly orient towards the object so this is called you know a binocular vision system uh, this is called visual navigation also. So, we will also discuss this kind of problem and we would like to solve using neural network. Okay. So, what I gave you today is that what we are going to learn in this uh, in not of course, we did not tell in detail what we will going to learn just highlighted some of the things that we are going to learn in this course intelligent control. So, while saying that let me conclude this lecture in a little philosophical manner uh, saying because we talked about intelligent control, but after learning this course or taking this course uh, probably we may still inquire about what is after all the intelligence. Uh, so, um, the big question is all the methods discussed so far make strong assumption about the space around that is when we use whether it is neural network or fuzzy logic or cone and sum any method that have been adopted in intelligent control uh, um, framework. Uh, so, they all uh, make always many strong assumptions uh, uh, and uh, normally they cannot work in a generalized condition. Um, and, and the question is that they can can they hypothesize a theory. When I design all this controller uh, I always take the data the engineer takes the data he always builds this models that you know that are updated uh, they update their own weights based on uh, the feedback from the plant. Uh, but the structure of the controller the model that uh, we we by which we assume the uh, physical plant all these are done by the engineer and also the, the structure of the intelligent controller uh, is also decided by the, uh, the engineer, but uh, we do not have a machine that can hypothesize everything the model it should select uh, the, 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 the controller it should select looking at simply data that as it encounters a specific kind of data from a plant can it come up with a specific controller architecture and can can, of, can come up with specific type of system model that is the question that we are asking now. Similarly, uh, because we are talking about learning uh, systems in, in this course we will be talking a lot about it again we can ask the question that can a learning theory prove a theorem. Can it propose a theory similar to special theory of relativity like you know can it become an artificial Einstein. Uh, so, like that uh, we can always become little philosophical when we actually try to understand the import of the, uh, uh, the word intelligence. Um, so, finally, 
can we bring a machine or system close to human way of operation not his behavior um, and, and you will see that the entire course that we will be discussing various tools uh, they, 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 they only will be dealing with these two things behavior that these tools are actually developed while mimicking the human behavior, but not the human way of working. An intelligent machine is one which learns and thinks and behaves in line with the thought process um, that we would like, but we will be very far from it. At least at the moment, uh, we are very far from this target of uh, uh, achieving real intelligence. Uh, so, finally, the hmm, I would like to tell you a very important uh, aspect of intelligence is perception hmm, that uh, probably you know this why I am saying is that as you will go through this particular course you will see that we will not be addressing this issue, but these are the issues that makes the concept of intelligence very exciting. So, what I am talking here about the role of perception. So, uh, we talk we showed a brain and uh, in that brain. So, you just look at this brain uh, the various location of this brain you know we have visual cortex, we have auditory cortex, we have uh, you know various uh, uh, location in this brain and they perform various actions and um, this is this is already uh, has been uh, many of these uh, things we have already uh, verified using various studies in neuroscience and uh, these studies and uh, you can say anatomical and neurophysical physiologic evidence neurophysio uh, physiological uh, neuropsychological evidence brain imaging these are various uh, methods by which we know that various parts of brain they function they do various uh, different functions. Uh, but when we have a perception of the world we have a unique perception that is how do we experience a coherent world that when whenever I perceive I do not perceive that my visual cortex is processing vis vision or color and my uh, auditory cortex is processing uh, you know sound and so forth we do not we, we, we perceive the my environment in a very unique way in a coherent manner. So, this is called unity of perception and uh, intelligence has also something to do with this unity of perception awareness and uh, obviously uh, certain things uh, are not very clear to us until now, but nonetheless still uh, you will see that this intelligent control uh, course will be very interesting, because some of the new concepts uh, we can uh, learn about them and we can we will learn that how to apply these new concepts like neural network, fuzzy logic, fuzzy neural network, genetic algorithm, how to apply these uh, principles in control theory. Thank you very much.